Hey class, Mr. M here with some advanced antiderivative uh, help videos. I couldn't find any good ones online, uh, so I figured, hey, I'll just step in and help you out. Alright, so this is one of the problems that looks like, it's not from your worksheet, but it looks a lot like it. Uh, I'll let you figure out which one that is. So how do you approach this? Uh, on its surface, it might look a little complicated, but uh, it really isn't too bad. To get rid of the fraction, because no one likes fractions really, um, I'm going to rewrite this as a numerator. times 1 over the denominator. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Just rewriting it. And here's where you might see the ln rule coming into play. So, reverse chain rule, let's check that here. This is the inside part, in this case the, the bottom part, right? Is its derivative sitting next to it, chained on? Well, the derivative of the bottom part here, or inside part, is let's see, secant squared 4x times 4, right? Chain rule there again. Uh, or 4 secant, let me write that uh, a little bit better, because um, it's kind of messy. Right? Put the chain on the front too. 4 secant squared 4x. Well, that's not what we have, but it's pretty close. So, being a bad boy, I'm going to cheat here. Divide by negative 4, because that would make that number on front positive 4, as we want it to be, right? But I feel bad, so I'm going to divide by negative 4, while well, I'm going to multiply by negative 4, too. Okay, well, now that's not so bad. So this negative 4 is on the outside. The problem now, as we've rewritten it, right, this term becomes just a 4 secant squared 4x times 1 over tangent 4x. Remember, this is just sort of in our imagination. Do we have the derivative of the bottom sitting next to it? If so, great. Well, we didn't, but we kind of tweaked it a little bit. All right, so now we have the relationship that we want, right? Smile, happy, good. So we can ignore, for our purposes, right, we can kind of not worry about this part here, because we know where it's coming from. It was chained on from the tan 4x. So we can just focus now on this part right here. It's antiderivative. So that has the structure that looks a lot like this right here. The antiderivative of 1 over x dx, or whenever math, d math. So, that we learn in class is this right here, right? By rule, as we saw, uh, relating it to the derivative rule in the same, in the opposite direction. So, the negative 4 is still out here, you know, waiting in disguise to mix a bunch of metaphors. And now we're going to go ahead and take the antiderivative. So, a mistake some people make is they leave the uh, integration sign there. Well, well, we're doing the integration now, so we're going to use up the integration, so to speak. So we're focusing on this part once again. 1 over x, right, is ln of the absolute value of that x. So this would be 1 over tan 4x will be the integral, oh, sorry, well, the integral will be ln of the absolute value of tangent of 4x plus c. Multiply by negative 4, and you have your answer. So the final answer is negative 4 ln of tan 4x plus, actually minus, you might think, 4c, but it's just a constant anyway, so it's still plus c. You don't have to worry about the arithmetic with plus c. It's just there for showing that it's a family of solutions. So there you go. There's your first one. This one involved the logarithmic rule. So I'm calling that the ln rule if you like to think of it that way, to organize your thoughts. We had to use that. Of course, we had to use a reverse chain rule. And we had to, of course, use um, knowledge about trig derivatives and trig antiderivatives. So all of that was involved here. Actually, just trig derivatives, not trig antiderivatives. Okay, let's look at another example. Hmm. You can see how this is, has some similarity to what you have on your, on your worksheet, so it's not exactly the same, but it's a lot like it. So here's the crux of the problem. If this were cosecant squared, we might be able to approach it more simply, but this is plain old cosecant, right? Uh, and that's one of those new ones that we kind of had to put in our little booklets to, to study and see if we can find some patterns and, and structures and, and regularity. Okay, so here's the inside part, right? It's not, it's not straight out of the formula book, but it's, it's kind of like those except for the inside part. So the inside part's derivative, right? Checking for reverse chain rule. What we want to find is 9x squared, right? Do we have that? No. 
but it's pretty close. It's negative 45x squared. So I'm going to cheat again. There's a 9. Yeah, I feel bad. Didn't really change the problem, right? Still, the problem in black, because the two red things are equivalent to multiplying by 1, which doesn't do anything. So, rewriting this slightly, I'm going to go ahead and make that look like 9x squared like I wanted to, times cosecant of 3x <coughs> cubed, x cubed, minus 4 dx. Okay, so now we have what we want. Good. So we can, again, ignore the chain. We don't have to worry about that anymore. We know where it's coming from. We're going backwards in time, so it's going to chain back inside. So it's the cosecant part that we're worried about, right? That's the part we're focused on. So how can we make sense of that? Let's take a look. From your formula booklet, or perhaps if you have it memorized, you have this rule right here, that the cosecant of, I think the book calls it u, but x, so cosecant of something with respect to that something is the ln of the absolute value of cosecant of u minus cotangent of u plus c. Uh, actually, sorry, I got the signs messed up. This should be minus, and this should be plus. Now, the way that logarithms work, I believe those two statements are, are equivalent. Because I think I learned the way that I, I wrote it originally, but... Uh, oops, let me erase that. Plus, okay. There we go. So there's our rule. <clears throat> so we take this part here and sort of ram it in right there. Okay. Well, the negative 5 still out here. We know that this is going to be negative ln of cosecant 3x cubed minus 4 plus cotangent of 3x cubed minus 4, close the absolute value bar, plus c. And distribute the 5, you know, or not distribute, just multiply the 5, and you get 5 ln absolute value of cosecant of that plus cotangent of that plus c. All right, fair enough. Another problem here next. Uh, but actually, before we go, let's summarize here. So we had to use this rule right here, right, which is the uh, cosecant rule, I guess you can call it if you want to. Um, one of those new ones that are a little bit harder, and again, they come from the fact that cosecant, right, is really uh, 1 over sine, right? So when you take the antiderivative of that, right, you essentially are using the logarithm rule, and that's where those two things get connected. Okay. This one, all right, it looks kind of ugly at first. You might try to find a problem that looks similar to it on your worksheet to help you guide to help guide you in terms of what to do. Uh, and on its surface, it may look a little bit unapproachable. So, the derivative of the inside part, right, is negative something big, I don't know what 25 times 6 is, it's about 150. x to the fifth, and that's not x to the fifth on top, so you can't use the reverse chain rule. Use substitution, that's gross, no one wants to do that. So, let's see what we can do here. There's some stuff in disguise. These numbers are not by accident. 15x squared I'm going to keep there. 425, 4 and 25, well, those are perfect squares. So, 2 squared is there, right? Minus 25, well, that's 5. And if I'm going to square it, that means x to the 6 used to be x to the 3rd, right? Because you, you, uh, you multiply exponents when you're raising an exponent to an exponent, right? That rule it just is a refresher here. x to the a to the b power is x to the a times b. And that's what, the, that's what happened right here, just in reverse. Okay, well this starts to look a little bit familiar, doesn't it? So from your formula booklet you have something like this. It's that the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is equal to arc sine of u over a plus c. 
I think your book has it written like that, with, with that on top, but the same thing. All right, so I'm going to make mine look a little bit like this. So 15x squared, I'm going to put it to the side. Uh, 1 over the square root of 2 squared minus 5x cubed squared dx. Okay. Well, the math part is the 5x cubed, right? Is its derivative? Yeah, it is. Right? Reverse chain rule. Right, all ready from the get-go, no adjustment necessary, so we can just ignore this. It's going to tuck back inside when you do the derivative in reverse. So comparing parts here, right, we're looking at the original model. The A represents the 2. Let me try to color code this. 2 here is sort of like our A, right? And our U squared, the thing that's being squared, right, do that in green, the thing that's being squared is right here, right? It's it squared. So u, you can think of as 5x cubed. Okay. So according to the rule, it says that arc sine of u, right, the math, which in our case is 5x cubed, right, over this number right here, which is 2, plus c is your answer. And so it is. Alright, there you go. Inverse trig, antiderivatives. As well as some more challenging trig derivatives. Sorry, I said derivatives. Antiderivatives. Trig antiderivatives. And finally, using logarithmic rule, right, this 1 over x stuff, in trig scenarios. Alright, hope this helps.